Hello and welcome to the English Martial Arts Podcast Show. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. It's the English Martial Arts Podcast Show. I love them a lot. Now, what does it mean to be a martial artist or a fighter in any martial discipline? And without going into all the philosophies of the different arts and their codes of what you should do and how you should behave, I mean, what do you really do? What does it really mean? Does it mean that you're a competitor? Does it mean that you're someone who trains the martial arts or combat sports for self-defense so that you can protect the people you love, your family, your friends, maybe the community? Or does it mean that it's just a hobby for you? Or is it a way of life for you? I know a lot of people in combat sports, it is a way of life for them, for a part of their life while they're still young enough and able enough to compete. And then they maybe go on to be a trainer or a teacher, mentor for people and train them. So, yes, it is a lifestyle for them. But it's also a lifestyle for traditional martial artists as well who think about nothing but the martial arts every day, who train diligently week after week, year after year to get the skills so that they can pass gradings and other things that um, the teacher or the martial art expects them to pass. I mean, if you look at something like Shorinji Kenpo in Japan, then obviously there is a lot more than just gradings. I mean, it is a way of life. They become monks, and those that are very serious about it go on to become teachers and live in the dojos, and it becomes their way of life and their living, uh, as well as their philosophical and religious way in life. And there are not that many martial arts that um, teach that way anymore. But there are a lot of traditional martial arts that still provide a way of life for the practitioner if they're dedicated enough. I mean, if they come for a hobby, as a hobby, then that's fair enough. If they come just to learn how um, to compete, that's also fine. They may move on to the more traditional side later on in life and then they may bring new people in children adults to then take on that martial art as their way of life now in the modern day and age people don't really think like that or if they do they're few and far between you know being such a busy life these days um jobs families etc but you can still make it your way of life and include all those things in it. I mean, that's what I have done. That's what my teacher, Terry Brown, has done. And it's what some of my students do. They have taken it on as a way of life, diligently training, going through gradings. They think about the martial art and how they can improve their own way of using it. And that's how they go through life, um, contented with what they do and their lot in life. Of course, you do get the charlatans in the martial arts who uh, defraud people out of their money and teach them terrible, terrible stuff that wouldn't work in a competition or in a life or death situation. They've always been there. They always will be there. But there are also people who are money grabbers as well. I mean, they teach decent stuff, but all their laughter is your money because they're trying to make the martial art their way of earning a living. And it doesn't work, really. You cannot earn a decent living teaching martial arts. You know, I work separately from doing and teaching my martial art because I know that the turnover is too great to earn a living from martial arts. It cannot be done. And if it has been done by a few, then good luck to them. But I can't see it earning them and a tremendous amount of money so that they can go on holiday once or twice a year, that they can treat their kids, that they can do. It's just hard slog all the time. 
And really, you want to be training and experiencing your martial art rather than it become your living and become a chore. And that's why I've always worked outside of my martial arts, although I bring my martial art into what I do. And it works very well that way. So the journey into the martial lifestyle is long. There's lots of blood, sweat and tears, and many, many more emotions that you go through when training hard, pushing yourself, pushing your body. And it's something that will improve you. It will make you a better person or it will break you. And like most people who come into the martial arts, they just pack up and leave. So what do people expect to get when they train martial arts? Well, I would imagine the first thing they want when they come to a martial art is self-defense, being able to protect themselves against unarmed and armed attackers while being trained in the ability to use arms and unarmed skills to make sure that they keep themselves and their family safe. But are they looking for more than just that? Are they looking for fitness? Are they looking for um, a place where they can belong and meet other like-minded people? Are they looking for a way of life? Are they looking to change their whole situation? Now, you'll find a lot, a hell of a lot of martial arts students really do have problems when it comes to confidence. After a while training, they gain that confidence and they're able to to then mix in with everyone else so that they gain confidence, they gain fighting ability, they gain fitness, and they got you've got that camaraderie that you get in a martial arts gym with all the banter, with all the chat, and even meeting up outside of class to do things together. And this is all part of what being a martial artist, joining a good club, is about. It's about learning things about yourself more than learning techniques. And once you've experienced those things about yourself, experienced that you can do things you never thought you could do, and you've achieved things that you never thought you would be able to achieve, that's when your life starts for real. Up until then, you may have been just muddling through, just doing it, living day to day, going to your humdrum job, going, walking the streets, getting on London transport, you know, things everyone does. Zombified like everyone else walking the streets, they don't know what to do, they've got their heads buried in their phones or their laptops, they get to work, their heads go straight back into computers. You know, it's something that the modern world has taken away from us, the ability to communicate with each other. And when you join a club, especially a martial arts club, all that comes back because there's no electronic phones. You, you leave them outside, you know, you, you leave your ego at the door and you just get on with everyone, you train hard with everyone and you have a laugh. You know, human communication once more. So if I ever give advice, which I don't that often, I would say join some kind of a sporting club or uh, even better, a martial arts club where you can learn things that are going to help you in your life and teach you a lot about yourself. And that's what it's all about. So thank you for listening to the English Martial Arts Podcast Show and hopefully you'll tune in for the next episode. Listen to us because we listen to you. 